In this lecture, we will examine Klingon nouns. The content of this lecture is taken from Chapter 2, covering nouns, in the Klingon Dictionary by Mark Okrand, published in 1992. In this lecture, we will examine the template of how Klingon nouns are constructed from their component morphemes. Every Klingon noun is required to have a root. Following the noun root, there may be optionally up to five suffixes. Each of these five types of suffixes encodes a piece of information about the noun. Type 1 suffixes encode information regarding size. Type 2 suffixes encode information regarding number. Type 3 suffixes encode information regarding veracity. Type 4 suffixes encode information regarding possession or specification. Finally, type 5 suffixes encode information regarding the noun's case. Here we see a complex example of a noun that has all five types of suffixes. The noun root in this case is the word qar, meaning error. There is a type 1 suffix that immediately follows the root, encoding that the noun is big, meaning a big error. The next morpheme, the type 2 morpheme, the type 2 suffix, marks the noun as plural. At this point, we have big errors, plural. The type, the next suffix, marks veracity, that the speaker is very sure of, of what they're talking. So at this point, we have a sure, certain, or definite, big errors. The next morpheme marks the possessor, that these are your big errors. Finally, the final morpheme marks noun case, in this case indicating that we are referring to a specific type of information, resulting in the free translation due to your definite major errors. Error, big error, big errors, certain or definite big errors, your certain or definite big errors, due to your definite major errors. Here we see the template of a noun in Klingon. Every Klingon noun must begin with a noun root. A Klingon noun may consist only of the noun root, or it may have one or more optional suffixes. If a noun has a type 1 suffix, the type 1 suffix will occur immediately after the noun root. If a noun has a type 2 suffix, it could occur immediately after the type 1 suffix, if there is one. Otherwise, the type 2 suffix would occur directly after the noun root. If a type 3 suffix is present, it could occur immediately after the type 2 suffix, if there is one. 
or if there is no type 2 suffix, uh, immediately after the type 1 suffix, if there is one. Otherwise, the type 3 suffix would occur immediately after the noun root. If a Klingon noun has a type 4 suffix, it could occur immediately after the type 3 suffix, if there is one, or if there is no type 3 suffix, immediately after the type 2 suffix, if there is one, or if there is no type 2 suffix, immediately after the type 1 suffix, if there is one. Otherwise, the type 4 suffix would occur immediately after the noun root. If a Klingon noun has a type 5 suffix, the type's 5 suffix could occur immediately after the type 4 suffix, if there is one. Otherwise, it could occur immediately after the type 3 suffix, if there is one. Otherwise, it could occur immediately after the type 2 suffix, if there is one. Otherwise, it could occur immediately after the type 1 suffix, if there is one. If there is no type 1, type 2, type 3, or type 4 suffix, the type 5 suffix would immediately follow the noun root. If a type 1 suffix is present, it encodes information regarding size. Marking the noun as either augmented or diminuted. If a type 2 suffix is present, it provides information regarding number. If the noun root is a person, there is a plural type 2 suffix that could encode that information. If the noun root is a body part, there is a different plural suffix. And finally, if the noun root is neither a person nor a body part, there is a third different plural suffix. Type 3 suffixes encode information regarding veracity, marking a noun as either so-called, apparent, or certain or definite. A type 4 suffix will encode information regarding possession or specification. If the noun root is a person, that noun could be marked for possession, specifically indicating that there is a first person singular possessor. There is a different first-person singular possessor suffix if the noun root is not a person. If the noun root is a person, it could have a first-person plural possessor. Or there could be a first-person plural possessor referring to not a person. If the noun root refers to a person, there could be a second person singular possessor. Alternatively, if the noun root is not referring to a person, there could be a second person singular possessor. If the noun root refers to a person, there could be a second person plural possessor. And likewise, if the noun root does not refer to a person, there could be a second person plural possessor. For third person, it doesn't matter whether the noun root refers to a person or not. Here, we have a suffix for third person singular possessor and a different one for third-person plural possessor. 
Finally, there are two type 4 suffixes that mark specification rather than possession. A proximal suffix and a distal suffix. Finally, type 5 suffixes encode information regarding case, marking the noun as locative, ablative, causative, benefactive, or the topic of the conversation. Let's now look at another complex example. Here is another Klingon noun that consists of a noun root, followed by a type 1 suffix, a type 2 suffix, a type 3 suffix, a type 4 suffix, and a type 5 suffix. We will come back to this example at the end of the lecture. For the remaining bulk of this lecture, we will go through the suffixes one by one, presenting an example of each type of suffix. On the left, we have our third example, shorsh, meaning wind. On the right, we see the augmented version of this word. We have shorsh a a, referring to a strong wind. Here, shorsh the word for wind, is modified with a type 1 suffix that is an augmentative suffix. The suffix is in red. Alternatively, a type 1 suffix could mark the noun as diminutive or small. Here on the right, example 6 shows shush om, or wisp of air, a small wind. Hom is the marker for diminutive. Moving on to type 2 suffixes. On the left, in example 7, we have Pok, the word for child. A child is a person. And so to mark child as plural, we use pok, the type 2 suffix marking plural for a person, here shown in red. Example 8 can then be glossed as children. Alternatively, if we want to mark a noun as plural, and the noun refers to a body part, we must use the alternate type 2 suffix, to, marking a body part as plural. Here we have kam, the word for foot, and kam to, marking foot as plural, leaving us with the translation feet. If a noun is neither a person nor a body part, then we use a different plural suffix. The suffix may. In example 11, we have the word for planet. A planet is not a person, nor is it a body part. And so the general purpose plural suffix me is used, leaving us with the word for planets.
Moving on to type 3 suffixes, marking veracity. Here we have rog, the word for peace. If we add the qok suffix, the type 3 suffix marking something as so-called, we have a word meaning so-called peace, which would imply that the peace is not real. The suffix hai marks something as apparent. In the book, the author gives an example of an apparent vessel, one that may have come up on censors but has not yet been confirmed. Alternatively, if the speaker is quite certain of the information, the suffix, type 3 suffix, not may be used instead, marking that the speaker is certain of the information. If a speaker wishes to mark a noun with as possessed by someone, we can use a type 4 suffix. Here, we have a noun root referring to a person. Bo, referring to a child. A child is a person, and so the spe a special suffix for person must be used. Where would be the first person singular possessor, meaning my child. To say our child, we would instead use the first person plural marker, ma. If instead we are talking about your child and you are just one person, we would use le as marking second person singular possessor, your child. Or if you refers to more than one person, a group, or two people, we would use the second person plural possessor suffix ra, marking your child, where we're referring to more than one person, the child of more than one person. Let's switch now so that the noun in question is not a person. Here we have the word for home. Zhuo. My home would be Zhuo Wedge. Our home, Zhuo Maj. Your home, if again we're referring to only one person, Zhuo Ledge. Or your home, where you are referring to more than one person. Raj. If the noun root in question is home, we could say Raj for his home, her home, its home. This suffix may be used referring to something that is not a person, as in home, but also may be used to refer to a person. Likewise, with the third person plural possessive, possessor suffix, charge. Here we have the word for their home. Charge. The final two type 4 suffixes marks this or that, something close to you or farther away from you. Here we have the word for child, and we want to refer to this child, implying that the child is close by. 
Pofam. This child. Or, if the child is further afield, that child. Pohvet. Finally, we have type 5 suffixes. A suffix could mark, a type 5 suffix would mark case. Here we have a locative suffix. Patak. Meaning, possibly, in the room. The second type 5 suffix marks ablative case, meaning away from. Pa -wo would mean from the room, implying going out from the room. Next, the causative suffix, mo, marking a cause. So, shush is wind, shush mo would be due to the wind. The fourth is benefactive case, fad. Mission, ko. Vod for the mission, benefiting the mission. The final type 5 suffix marks the noun root as emphasized or the topic of the sentence. Here we have the word for information followed by the suffix topicalizing it. That er would mean information, implying that it is emphasized. This concludes our look through the template of a noun in Klingon. Now let's look again at the two examples of complex nouns that we saw at the very beginning of the lecture. Here, the word begins with the root meaning error. It is followed by a type 1 suffix that is an augmentative. The type 1 suffix is followed by a type 2 suffix, marking the noun as plural. We then have a type 3 suffix marking the veracity of the noun as certain or definite. Next is a type 4 suffix marking the possessor as your. And finally, the type 5 suffix marking the case. The result is a single word having consisting of a root a type 1 suffix, a type 2 suffix, a type 3 suffix, a type 4 suffix, and finally a type 5 suffix. The free translation of this sentence is due to your certain or definite major errors. Our final example is example number 2. In this example, the noun root is the word for child. The noun root is immediately followed by a type 1 suffix, the diminutive suffix, marking the child as a small child. The type 1 suffix in this example is followed by a type 2 suffix. In this case, the general purpose plural word when the general purpose plural word is used for a noun representing a language user, a person, there is the implication that the, that the subject is scattered about. So here, the implication is that the small children are not in one place, but rather they're scattered about. The plural suffix, the type 2 suffix, 
is followed by a type 3 suffix marking the veracity. Here, the speaker is marking the child, the small children scattered about, as so-called, meaning not true small children, but so-called small children. The type 4 suffix mark these as our so-called small children. And finally, the type 5 suffix marks this noun as being in the locative case, marking a location. The free translation of this complex Klingon noun might be something along the lines of at the location of our so-called small children who happen to be scattered about. This concludes our lecture on Klingon nouns. This presentation was created and narrated in 2020 by Lane Schwartz. You are free to reproduce and adapt this work under the terms of the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 4.0 International License.